And in today's video, we'll install a wireless lighting system. Hey, what is going on guys? Joe here from JPRC and welcome back for another upgrade video on my SCX10 II with the JK body here. Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys something really, really cool and that is a wireless power LED system. Now for the longest time, uh, we have had LED lights on our RC trucks and cars. One of the most annoying things for me is the wiring between the body and the chassis itself. And for this JK here, it comes with two cables. I mean, two cables. How annoying is that? Normally, I would take one cable, but it comes with two cables for connecting the lighting system and the body. So I had no choice but to come up with something that would get rid of those cables. And what I had baked up here is a wireless power system. Now, for wireless charging technology, it's been around for many, many years. Uh, it started back in the 90s, you can find it in your toothbrush and in the last few years has been available on your smartphones already. So there's no reason why we cannot take the same technology and apply it to our RC trucks and that's exactly what I have baked up here. Now before we get into it, just a quick update on this truck. As you can see right here, I took off all of the plastic bits on it because I had to paint the body on the interior in a silver as I mentioned before. So that is gonna help pop out the red really nicely. And also, I pinged up a little bit on the radiator just with a gunmetal color here as you can see and I also pinged up the housing with a silver in there. That is just to help reflect more lights when we're done with it. Let me bring you guys up close. So what you're seeing right now, this is a wireless power receiver module. And I already have the transmit module already placed on the on top of the servo. And the way it works is pretty simple. I have a JST connector coming off of my battery lead that connects to into it. And what it does is generates an electric current and then send it out to the coil and that will generate a little bit of a magnetic field. And when we put this coil near that other coil from the transit module, it will reverse the process and will take that magnetic field and convert that back into electric current. And let me show you guys quickly how it works. Now for those of you who are running JST connector off of your battery lead, uh, you're very familiar with the process with the soldering. And for the purpose of this video, we're not going to cover any soldering that is needed uh, because these modules here, they did not come looking like that. All right, just to demonstrate it, how it works, I have a set of generic four LED uh, with a Futaba connector here. Uh, this is gonna go into a light bar that I'm gonna be putting on the truck. Uh, you won't see it today in this video, but for today's video, I just wanted to show you guys how this works and we'll put it back together on the truck later. All right, so we'll connect in the uh, Futaba connector here, which I solder onto the receiver end for the power. Connect the battery lead. And I'm running a 3-cell here. This module is compatible with 3-cell and 2-cell battery. Alright, so to um, get the LEDs to light up, it's pretty straightforward. All we gotta do is take the coil, put it right very close to the transmit module. And you can see now they're powering up. That is pretty cool. So in today's video, I will um, get this body all fixed up i put all the plastic bits back onto it and i'll show you guys how to mount this onto the body and we'll finish it off and that's why i want to finish the painting for the silver inside the body before i permanently fix this into the body now of course it wouldn't be a how-to video if i didn't show you guys how i built these things these parts do not come looking like this uh, as you can see here um i have already waterproofed it by dipping the whole thing into the epoxy and i used the ammo can top that already comes with your Axio kit and is available in your spare part bag. I simply just put a lot of epoxy in there, water, waterproofing it and also gluing it to the cover so that I can be taping it with double-sided tape to the underside of the body. Uh, on, on this end right here, I simply solder on a Futaba connector. For your choice of connector, you can use whatever you want. But for me, I use Futaba connector for my lighting system. And as a matter of fact, uh, you can buy these modules off ebay for about six dollars and i was trying to build a coil on my own but it was not until i actually found it they already made so there's not much work you have to do other than soldering a connector and making a housing for it and for the transmit module as you can see this is what we solder in the jst connector 
and then you can um, put this inside a uh, housing like this. This is the Axial ammo can that I made. Uh, simply soldering a GST connector on the battery lead that will make it work really nicely. Uh, and basically the input side for the transmit, it accepts any input from 9 to 12 volt. So that's perfect for our 2 to 3 cells battery. And then on the output side, it will output between 5 to 7 volt depending on the input. Now the reason for the voltage drop is because of the wireless power is not as efficient as the actual physical wire. However, that inefficiency worked out to our benefit because if I had plugged in a 3 cell battery directly into my LED light, it would have just blown them up. So this inefficiency actually worked out to our advantage for running a 2 to 3 cell battery. And to give you a little bit more detail on how I built this housing, uh, it is not yet permanently fixed. I just had it placed right there so I can spot out where I can place the transmit and the receiver module. I found that it is the best to put this run on top of the servo and then you can tape the uh, receiver module right under the body. So when you have the body closed onto it, the transmit and receiver module will be very close with minimum space in between without physical contact and you can get your lighting system working. There you go, this is what I have. Uh, it's very simple. The uh, the transmit module is just the uh, ammo can. I kind of uh, cut out a hole on both sides. They're not even fixed permanently yet. So I can actually pop this out like that just to show you. Now this thing is already waterproof. As I said earlier, I use epoxy. So there you go. It's very simple and straightforward. These ammo can comes with your XL spare part. So uh, you can get it going. So I also have soldered on this Futaba 1, 2, 3 split connector that allows me to run more than one set of lights on this truck. For the uh, original lights, I could have cut the connectors in and replaced those connectors on it. However, I'm gonna be repurpose these LED lights for a different light bar that's gonna go to the front. So I will leave it as it is. My uh, radiator, I have already wired in some custom wiring for additional LED lights since I'm going to be repurposing the existing one. Uh, this one will work just fine. These are just very generic LED lights. So let's go ahead and get the body back together. We'll get the lighting mounted on it. I will show you guys how it looks afterward. Alright, so since we have the coil here uh, roughly about 10 millimeter apart from the driver's side body pose, I am going to attach the coil on the body here, uh, right around here. So it kind of has the indentation on the hood so it doesn't abstract anything. on this way. Body off, lights off. Body on, lights off. Oh and by the way, I forgot to mention in my last video, I also made this spare tire right here uh, using the Poline tire wrap cover. Uh, there's really nothing inside, just a tire form and piece of lex and wrapped around it. That's gonna add to the scale look without adding weight to the back end. And also to clean up the look in the back, I have made this little uh, Axial license plate scale from a sticker sheet that I have for my kit version of the SCX-102. So that will go on right here and it will look perfect. There you go, that completes the look. Alright guys, so I have tidied up the cable a little bit. The tapes are just for now. I also put a piece of electrical tape over the coil uh, just to prevent the clipping on it uh, and routed the cable through the side. Uh, let's put it on the body and see how it goes. Boom, there you go. Check that out. Body on, the lights on, body off, lights off. How cool is that? Now we'll take a look at the back end. Now if you notice on the back end here, I uh, I added a little piece of tape inside the housing 
so it looks a little bit more like the backup light and it doesn't have the uh, direct LED light look when you're looking straight into it so it looks a little bit more to scale and I think that license plate really adds a little bit of detail for the scale look to this truck I think overall it, it worked out really good I mean I'm really liking you know, the way it looks right now so it's really cool and by the way the reason why I chose the silver color for the backing color instead of black is because the silver helps to make the bright red here look a lot more metallic normally for a bright color I would go with a silver backing color instead of black because it really helps to bring out the metallic look on it. It looks a lot more like metal panels instead of the translucent body color. And I did not even tint the windows. These are the default tint, but having a silver in there limiting the color going inside the body, it looks so much more scale already. So definitely let me know in the comments below what you guys could do with the wireless power system like this. I would love to hear from you guys what other ideas that you could come up with. So with that, make sure to thumbs up, subscribe. I will see you guys in the next.